What's up everyone? Sam here from ByteByBite.com and in this video I want to give you three bulletproof strategies that you can use to negotiate your salary when you get a job offer. And these are strategies that you can use even with all the craziness that's going on here in 2020. Even if you don't have competing job offers, even if you accidentally tell them what your current salary is during the job search process. And so these are going to be three strategies that you can use whenever you are trying to negotiate your salary. And if you want even more information on negotiating your salary, I highly recommend checking out Josh Duty from over at Fearless Salary Negotiation. He helps software engineers to prepare for that negotiation process and negotiate potentially thousands of dollars of increase in their offers. So I'll put his info up in the cards and I highly recommend you check him out as well. All right, let's get into the strategies for negotiating your salary. And number one is something that you may have heard before, but I see a lot of people don't know how to implement this properly. And that is not to be the first person to say a number. When you're the first person who gives a number of like salary expectation to the recruiter or to the hiring manager, it creates an informational imbalance. What you are in the situation when you were negotiating where they already have a lot more information than you do. They know exactly what salary they're willing to offer you. They know what most likely the salary is that you are currently making or at least in that ballpark. And so they have a lot of information to negotiate and any information that you have that they don't is information that you can use to negotiate for a higher salary. So if you don't tell them what you're currently making, then they don't know whether what they are offering you is something that you're going to be excited about or something that you might push back on. Whereas if you tell them what you're currently making, then it's really easy for them to offer you a salary that's like very tailored to what you were already making. So let's say that a company was willing to offer $150,000 for the role, but you tell them that you're currently only making 80,000. Well then chances are they're not going to offer you that 150,000 because they know that that's way more than they need to offer you to get you to accept the job. They'll probably offer you something more in the $100,000 range, which is still good and it's still more than you're making, but it's not nearly as much as you could be making. So you want to maintain that as much information as you can without giving it to them too early because that's going to give you a stronger negotiating position. And how do you actually accomplish this? Like, how do you avoid saying this? Because I know in a lot of cases, people will just ask and it's really easy to give away this information or let it slip without really thinking about it. And I want to encourage you to use something like the following script. When they ask, what are you currently making? Or what are you, what is the salary that you're looking to make in this position? You can say, yeah, I'm happy to talk about that when the time comes, but first, I'd like to see if this position is a good fit. And this is a great way to say, emphasize not only that you're not going to tell them right now, but also emphasize that you have control over the situation. You are actually the one who is interviewing them and deciding if the job is right for you as much as they are interviewing you. So it's a really good way to set yourself up as a person who takes this seriously and as a person who understands their own work. So I would highly encourage you if they ask that question, don't actually give them a range, don't actually give them a specific number, just defer the question. And by framing it this way as looking whether something is a, whether a position is a good fit, it's a great way to cement your, um, your idea of like your self worth. Tip number two, which is super, super important for negotiating your salary is have a range in mind of what you're actually going to ask for. And this is not just about saying like, oh, I want to make 10% more. I want to make 20% more, but it's understanding what is a range of salaries that you would actually be willing to accept. So this is something that I highly recommend doing before you even get into the job searching, before you even get that offer, figure out what is the minimum salary that I would be willing to accept? Because then it's really easy when you're negotiating, you could say, okay, well, this is below my minimum salary. So thank you, but no thanks. Or unless we can come up to that minimum salary, you're not going to accept the offer. And so it's not even a question of, you know, whether to accept the job or not, or hemming and hawing or anything like that. It's great to make as many of those decisions beforehand as possible, because you can look at it much more objectively than when you're in the moment and like stressed out about whether you should accept the offer or whether this is the best you're going to get or anything like that. So that's number one is establishing what that minimum is. But then you also want to think about how am I going to ask in a way that gets me as much additional salary as I possibly can without potentially jeopardizing the offer, without potentially asking for so much that they think it's totally unreasonable. And the way that you want to do this is you want to start with asking for 10% more. So start with 10% more 
And then the less you care about this specific job opportunity and the more value you can offer to the company, the more you can increase that. So what this means is that if you're looking at a company where you don't really care if you get the job or not, let's say that you already have a great job, but you would be really valuable to them, then you might scale from 10% up to closer to 20%. You probably don't wanna ask for more than 20% because that's just an insanely large jump from where they're starting. But if you don't really care, the fact is that you can ask for a lot more because they really want to hire you and it doesn't matter to you too much whether they accept or not. So the more that you can offer to them and the more that you don't care whether you get the role, you can push towards that 20% mark rather than 10%. Now on the flip side, if you are looking at a role and you're like, this is the only offer I have, I really need this job, uh, I'm not necessarily their best candidate and I'm so grateful that they picked me. This is like the polar opposite. And yes, you should still negotiate in this case. You shouldn't just say, okay, I'll accept whatever they offer me because by offering you the job, they have already invested a lot. They've already expressed that they want to hire you. So you should still ask for something, but you might keep it on the lower end, like more close to that 10% number. That's still an increase. That's still a good negotiating starting point. And they may come back and offer that and they may not. But by offering that, asking for that lower number, it's going to reduce the risk of negotiation and it's still gonna feel very reasonable. You're not asking for them, them for a lot more. You're not asking them for something that could possibly seem to them like overkill. You're just asking for a little bit more. And that's a great way to negotiate when you aren't feeling as confident in the offer and when you're not feeling as confident in your negotiation skills. But you should still have a range and you should adjust that range depending on the specific situation to somewhere between 10 and 20%. And the final tip for you, tip number three, is that you need to negotiate even when you don't have leverage. And what does this mean? This means that you need to negotiate if this is your only job offer. You need to negotiate even with global craziness going on right now. Even when it feels like you shouldn't negotiate, even when it feels like companies aren't going to give you any leeway, you should still try to negotiate. And there are a couple reasons for this. First of all, what's the worst that can happen? I want you to honestly ask yourself, what is the worst that you can happen if you ask for a raise? If you ask for more money than they originally offered you? Obviously the worst worst that can happen is that they would reject you, right? But if we scale our ask, if we do what I talked about in point number two, they're much less likely to reject us out of hand and they're more likely to have a conversation with us and discuss how we can come to a place that works for everybody. Honestly, these companies have already invested so much in the hiring process. I've just gone through the hiring process myself trying to hire someone to work at Bite by Bite and it is an involved process. You put a lot of work into it. You put a lot of resources into it. And once you find someone, you want them on your team. The company is not making you an offer unless they really want you and you are the person that they want to bring on to work in this job. So chances of them just rejecting you out of hand if you ask for even a 10% increase is very, very low. Now, the other thing that you have to think about is that the amount of money that you're asking for, that's a lot. that could be a lot of money to you. Right? Like if you're getting offered $100,000 and you asked for $115,000, $15,000 is a lot of money, right? $15,000 is going to make a big difference in your life, but you know who it's not going to make a difference for? It's not going to make a difference for the company that's hiring you. We tend to think about things on a scale that we are familiar with, right? We think about things on a scale that we experience that. But the fact of the matter is that money for a company and money for an individual are totally different. You're, the company that you're looking at most likely is making millions and millions and millions of dollars per year. So at the end of the day, that $15,000 difference is not likely to be very significant in the eyes of the company. Now they may still have policies around, you know, what they'll allow for negotiations and what they won't and yada, yada and price and salary bans and all that stuff. So it's like, it's not necessarily that they're just going to say, oh, here, have the money. But even if you don't have any leverage, that's still a small amount of money to them. And if they really want to hire you, which we know that they do because they've made you an offer, you want to negotiate because they are going to want to find a place that you can meet in the middle and that you are going to be willing to accept their offer. And so with that, that's all I got for you today. As a reminder, don't be the first person to say a number when you're in the negotiation. Make sure number two, that you have that range in mind. 
that you know what percentage of an increase that you're gonna ask for. And number three, do negotiate even when you don't have leverage and even when it feels uncomfortable. If you do these things, I guarantee that you are gonna have much more success with your negotiation. And we all know how much of a difference that negotiation can make in the long term. And so with that, that's all I got for you. If you enjoyed this and want to learn more about how to actually prepare for your coding interviews, definitely check out bitebybyte.com slash masterclass and you'll be able to join my free masterclass where we talk about the four horsemen of the whiteboarding apocalypse and how to prepare for your coding interviews. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.